This is the demo for forgotten side effects. And this specifically will show trigger side effects. And it's extremely common to see triggers added and then forgotten about. And then those triggers end up adding overhead and unintended side effects that you don't even realize are happening until you actually have a very pronounced performance issue. And then it might take you longer than it normally would have to solve the issue because you go, oh, okay, there's a trigger on that table. So I'll show you a quick example. We have a table that I'm going to create called Charge Demo, and we're going to use the credit database for this. And I've gone ahead and created it, and I'm going to create a trigger on that table based on a column that I've added to this table called Insert Date. And what I want it to do is reflect that moment in time when the insert occurred. So I'm creating a trigger, and I'm using After Insert, and I'm going to just update that insert date based on the current time. And now we've created it. And then the other thing I'm going to do is just show you the statistics I/O overhead of an insert of 300,000 rows from the original charge table into this charged demo table. So let's go ahead and execute set statistics I/O on, which will show me I/O overhead of that particular batch. I'm also setting no count on so that you don't see the row count notification back to SQL Server Management Studio. Let's execute that. And now I'm going to insert into charge demo, picking the top 300,000 rows from the charge table. Now, you might be looking at that previous trigger and go, well, why would somebody do that? And yet it happens quite a bit where you would be performing some kind of action that you could have done up front or even redundant actions. So I've seen scenarios where you have defaults and triggers and you have logic in a stored procedure. So you have three different ways that the same column is getting updated and you really should just pick one. All right. So it took about five seconds for that query to run. Okay, the time is going to vary based on your own system. And then with regards to the I.O., we show that there's three different table access operations. The first is the charge demo, which shows the number of logical reads, about 820,000. Then we have uh, an access to the charge table. So you had charge demo before, you have the charge table, which makes sense because we have our select into that insert, which has some logical reads. But then notice this, we have another access of charge demo, and then here's the associated logical reads with that, so 902,000 logical reads. So we're hitting that table another time based on that trigger. Now, let's look at an alternative strategy. If we see that our inserts are getting longer and longer, let's go ahead and drop that trigger. And instead of a trigger now, I'm going to have a constraint on that table, so I'm going to add a constraint, a default constraint, again pulling the current date and when it gets inserted, it should use that as a value if I don't explicitly set it. So I've created that constraint. I'm going to truncate our test table. And let's do a 300,000 row insert again. And this time, the number of seconds took about two seconds. Now, you might be thinking, okay, was it transaction log growth or anything like that? But just keep in mind, I ran this test a few times before recording this demo. So the database was already ready and uh, prime for this test and the results are pretty consistent so five seconds originally two seconds after doing a constraint instead which is more tightly coupled with the table and then the other side effect or lack of side effect is that we are only hitting that charge demo table once so I have charge demo table here with my logical reads 820,000 and then one access of charge again with the logical reads 1755 and notice there is no third entry for charge demo we're not hitting it again and yet that actual column that that actual column that we're updating the insert date did get modified uh, upon insert and I can prove it to you right now let's go ahead and just select insert date from our charge demo table and we'll just see that, yes, it, it did get updated. So all of the rows, all 300,000 rows had that value updated. Same thing that would have happened with a trigger, but with a lot less overhead. So the key thing here is I'm not saying that you shouldn't use triggers, but you should use triggers in scenarios where it makes sense and where there aren't higher performing or better performing alternatives like constraints.